Greetings everyone, P. Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to pick number 23 of my favorite 31 hard rock and metal albums of the 70s countdown. We're doing it each and every day this month here, July 2023, 31 days in a month. 31, my favorite 31 favorite heavy albums of the 70s. I have set upon myself a maximum of only two albums per any one band for my list. You guys can do whatever you like down in the comments below. That's how I'm working it here because, of course, if I didn't do that, my list would probably be made up of like five or six bands, right? Because a lot of my favorite bands had more than two <clears throat> really strong albums in the 70s that I love a lot, right? So, uh, so yeah, so this makes it a little bit more interesting. So here today, we're going to talk about uh, the second release from this American band. Released October 22nd, 1974, recorded at the Village Studios in Los Angeles, California, produced by Kenny Kerner and Richie Wise for Casablanca Records. I'm talking about Hotter Than Hell from Kiss. Yes, indeed. Either you love them or you hate them, right? That's kind of the way it is with Kiss. I, I know very few people who are kind of like, yeah, Kiss are okay. Most people are like, yeah, I love Kiss. I've loved them since I was a kid. Or, I can't stand Kiss, I don't like the makeup, I don't like the image and all that kind of stuff, the theatricality of it, they're not good musicians, blah, 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 who cares. Uh, I grew up with Kiss, I still love Kiss, especially, especially early Kiss, right? And uh, I just, they got the songs to back it all up, regardless of what you think of their musicianship or the vocals or anything like that. I just think the songs are great, they're fun, it's heavy, it's... You know, I grew up loving superheroes and monsters and all that kind of stuff. And, man, this, this was like, you know, this was everything for me. Paul Stanley, rhythm guitar, lead and backing vocals. Gene Simmons, bass guitar, lead and backing vocals. Peter Chris, drums, lead and backing vocals. And Ace Fraley, lead guitar. And a little bit of backing vocals as well. So here we've got, uh, we've got some absolute Kiss classics on here. Uh, you know, it's funny because I think, like when I think of, Kiss and especially 70s Kiss. I mean, my go to release is always Kiss Alive, but you know, I don't pick Alive albums for these countdown things. Kiss Alive, I think, is magnificent, right? Because it has all the definitive versions of all those great songs, all the best songs from the first album and this album and Just to Kill, right? I mean, that's basically what it is. Uh, but I've always liked this album the best out of those first three studio albums. For some reason, there's a even though the production is like kind of dark and murky and whatnot, I think the song this is a dark album, and it's a pretty heavy album, <clears throat> I think. Whereas uh, you know the first and the third albums are, uh, you know, the tone is not as dark. Uh, some of the song, not all the songs, but some of the songs are a little bit more kind of party anthem, typical Kiss type of thing, where I don't really get that here. It starts off with "Got to Choose." Who's your baby? I mean, there's riffs everywhere on this album. Classic riffs. Love Got to Choose. Such a good, in-the-pocket, groovy, hard rock song. Then, of course, you got Parasite. Parasite is terrific. How about that opening riff? Just so, so good. Ace knows how to write some riffs, man, let me tell you. Uh, and I, you know, one of the great things about Kiss, and I talk about this with many bands, I love when you've got two or three or, or four or more lead singers in a band and they always kind of trade off and whatnot so here on this album you know you got paul ace and peter who are you know peter not as much on this album but you know you do have them a little bit here and uh it's just great that every song and, and they all sound so different from each other right uh going blind is kind of you know, man just atmospheric dark just morose type of i don't know cool song doesn't get any credit. It's like one of the forgotten little gems on this album. And then, of course, you got the classic title track, Harder Than Hell. One of their all-time great songs. Really go, really good. Then Let Me Go, Rock and Roll. That's more of like kind of like what we got on the first album and what we see a lot on the, on the third album. Let Me Go, Rock and Roll. Not one of my favorites here, but it's 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 one of those kind of early kind of Kiss anthems. I'm surprised that Let Me Go, Rock and Roll wasn't a bigger hit for the band. Uh, then we got on side two. <clears throat> All the way is terrific. Uh, Gene is very well represented on this album. All the way is great song, great chorus, and then one of my favorite Kiss songs of all time, "Watching You." Big, doomy, dark, heavy. Another snarling Gene Simmons vocal on that. I absolutely love "Watching You." I love the riff with the whole song. It's even better on the live album, but it's great on here too. Uh, Main line. All right, that's another kind of more upbeat uh, party song. That's a Peter Chris vocal on that one. Good song, catchy song. 
Then you got Coming Home, another cool track, Paul Stanley vocal on that one. And then the last song, another one of my favorites here, and a underrated gem in the early Kiss catalog, and that's Strange Ways. Written by Ace, sung by Peter, got a great uh, vocal from Gene on the chorus. Uh, yeah, so good. Man, that riff. Dun, 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 dun. <clears throat> so heavy, so doomy. And then how about that wild guitar solo from Ace? Right, using like the backwards phaser or whatever the hell it is, man. It's just so freaking out of this universe, right? I mean, Ace was like the king of doing these kind of like basic but strange and cool sounding guitar solos. So, yeah, I just, I love this album. I fell in love with it when I was a kid. Still love it to this day. And, uh, yeah, just, uh, you know, the, the story to go about the, the photography session, you know, to shoot all these photos for this album, the back of the album cover, and how, you know, in this, like, you know, Paul and Gene didn't drink at all, didn't drink, didn't do drugs, didn't smoke, any of that kind of stuff. And uh, <clears throat> um, I think it was champagne or something, if I remember correctly. Uh, during the sessions, they had uh, all sorts of champagne around, and Paul somehow was convinced to drink some champagne. And he got pretty, pretty wasted. And there were women all over the place, and he just kind of passed out, and, you know, the lightweight that he is. And, uh, yeah. Cool stuff. I mean, this just looks, you know, again, this was a new band. Kiss were not overly successful at this point yet. and uh, But they looked like, you know, hard rock royalty, right? This just this aura, this mystique about it. You know, it's kind of a Japanese geisha type of thing. And, uh, yeah, just awesome stuff. Really love this album. Anyway, let's uh, talk about charting information in Australia. Made it to number 98. Canada, 91. Japan, 46, charted the highest in Japan. U.S. Billboard charts, number 100. It's as high as it got, right? That's the kiss weren't a big deal yet. Uh, but over time, this album did go gold here in the States, 500,000 units sold. And that was basically people playing catch-up, right? So with the big success of Kiss Alive and then, of course, Destroyer and Love Gun and Kiss Alive 2, right, and Rock and Roll Over, uh, people started going back and scooping up the Kiss catalog. So while this didn't, when it, the year it was released, uh, it didn't really do much of anything. Uh, it earned the gold certification status, and when the last time it was certified, I don't know. But uh, yeah, it's all the early Kiss albums eventually caught up to the success that the band were having with all those other albums that I mentioned later in the decade. So uh, yeah, <clears throat> so that is my pick for today, Hotter Than Hell by Kiss. Let us know what you think of Hotter Than Hell down in the comments below, as well as your pick for today, pick number 23. Is that what I said? Yeah, pick number 23. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow with another one, right? So coming up in just a little bit, we've got Ranking the Albums, where I will be ranking the catalog, along with Jim Baki and Craig Kaminsky of Fu Manchu, the great California stoner metal band, right? So uh, tune in for that. That was a lot of fun. You'll enjoy it if you've never listened to the band. Come and hear a little bit about what some of the albums are. You should probably go and check it out. And uh, if you are a fan of the band, come along with us and rank it along with us down in the comments below. So we'll see you in a little bit. Also got uh, the next episode of uh, uh, Overlooked and Underappreciated Live Albums. It's coming up also today. right? And uh, more happening all week long here on Sea of Tranquility. So till then, I am P. Pardo. Have a good one, everybody. See you tomorrow morning with uh, number 22 of my 31 favorite hard rock and metal albums of the 70s. Till then, have a good day, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.